Okay, I continued working on the F16 V2, which is a 16 slash 32 string controller, depending on whether you have the expansion board and what mode that you put the uh, controller into. Um, the strings or the string ports, I call them ports, uh, have the ability to drive in 16 port mode. Um, you can either drive uh, 680 pixels or 340 if you're in 32 string port mode. And because of the high channel counts, it would be nice to have a way to um, connect multiple strings to the same port as long as they're the, of the same type. For instance, if they're 2811s, they, uh, you know, if a port was a 2811 port, you'd have to connect all 2811s. But the virtual strings give you the ability to um, set all the different parameters that are unique to the string other than the actual string type. So here's the look at the user interface as we have it now. We have the port number, the type, the start channel, the pixel count, the group count. The group count is the count that you put in if you wanted pixels to repeat with just simple grouping. So if you wanted uh, one RGB channel to control five uh, LEDs, then you'd set five in there. And then we have the end channel, which is calculated for you. It's not editable. And we have whether the string could be forward or reversed and then the string orders, uh, the six different uh, permutations of the string order. We have the null node count, which is how many null nodes you want in the beginning of the uh, string. And then we have whether zigzag is enabled and then the zigzag count. So if you had, let's say, a string that was 100 long and you wanted it to zigzag back and forth every 10 pixels, you would enable that and you'd put in 10. Of course, you'd want to set this to 100. Group count of, of 1. And the last item we have is the brightness, which goes down from 0 to 10%. And this is a work in progress. We're actually um, starting to do some work with some gamma correction in 8-bit um, in as well as in 12-bit uh, strings. So that's kind of a look at the user interface. You'll notice there's an additional feature here which is a plus sign. If you wanted to, for instance, um, configure strings to match this pole that I have right here, this this North Pole, which was an idea that was on DIYC that Sean um, implemented for me for the most part. It's been painstakingly amount of time to build those for me. But what we have here is we have a strip that goes around the pole um, around a PVC pole and with coral wrapped around it. And that strip goes up, it's 14 pixels um, high, and then there's two pixels inside the dome. Uh, because these are uh, 2811 12 volt strips where each node or each pixel is three actual LEDs, um, there's more than 14 in there. It's 14 times 3, and in here it's 2 times 3, so there's actually six individual 50-50 LEDs in the dome. So if we were just to come in, and, I, and um, if we were to uh, come in here and set this one up, uh, the first thing we'd want to do is make the stem. So we'd put the start channel at 1. Uh, we want 14 pixels with a group count of 1 going forward, and we'll just leave the order alone for now and we want zigzag off and you can either set this to zero or um, and we'll set the brightness down so the video doesn't get uh, crazy so now we've modeled that so we can go ahead and send that and if we go ahead and click the first channel you'll see we're lighting the first LED on the bottom uh, second um, never mind this element over here I have it connected to the same in fact why don't I uh, go ahead and just uh, it's on port 3 I'll go ahead and put this up at a higher count and that way it won't bother us during the demo so I'll save that so now that should not come on anymore they just so happened that I had it configured for channel 1 so it was uh, um, mimicking what I was doing um, on the on the first poll uh, but that is a good side note and that is on the F16 V2 the channels could be duplicated. Uh, the data could go to, to, to multiple strings. It doesn't need to go to a particular string. Uh, a particular string could be any start channel from 1 to 32,768. 
Um, so that is one note. So we've modeled the first string, um, the pole going up, and if we were to um, um, highlight, if we see the end channels at 42, if we were to go from one uh, down to channel 42, I'm using X lights as the tester, we would see that we could light the whole thing up, and it's all white now, and we'll turn it off. So we've modeled that portion there. Um, if you wanted to change the color order, the best way to change the color order is to look at the KC, okay, we're blue, and the next one is red, and the next one is green, so we know we're BRG, so we can actually switch this now to BRG, hit save, and now you would expect it to be, uh, actually, um, I hit BGR, <laughs> so you want BRG, and we hit save. And now you'd expect it to be correct. So now you, when you click the first channel, you get red and then green and then blue. Okay, so we've set the channel order correctly, and we have um, that's the stem modeled now. Well, we we want to model this dome here at the top, which is two pixels in there. And we don't ever want those two pixels to be different colors from each other because you don't want the dome to be half one color, half the other. So what we do is we click the little plus signal right here next to the one, and what that does is it adds a virtual string. And we notice on the virtual when the virtual string is added, there's a minus symbol there, so we can go ahead and click it to delete the virtual string. So it's that easy to add and delete a virtual string underneath the string port. You just click the plus to add, click the minus to delete. You can add as many as you want, and you could obviously delete the ones that you don't want. Okay, so we're going to add one. And you see the end channel of the first 14 ends at 42, so the start channel will automatically gets put to 43. So we go ahead, and that's 43, and we want two nodes long. But we want the grouping to be two, okay, because we don't ever want them to be out of sync, so we always want them to act as an individual pixel. And if we look, that pixel starts at 43 and ends at 45 as far as the channels go. So it'll be 43, 44, and 45, respectively, for the RGB. And we hit Save and that gets saved. So if we go to channel 43, which is right here, and we click it, it turns red. The whole dome does. What we've just did is lit two pixels in there because we set the grouping to two, and are you know, actually six 50-50 LEDs because they're in groups of three. And if we go to 44, it turns green. And if we go to 45, it turns blue. And we go to 46, 46 doesn't exist yet. So, Basically, we've modeled now um, the 14 pixels that make up the the um, the stem, and then the two pixels that make up the dome. Now, there's an interesting point here to note, and that is is that the, this virtual string, all these per, uh, um, parameters are individually settable. So we can set whether the reverse or whether the different color order, whether it has a null pixel uh, in it whether there's a zigzag or in, 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 in the brightness uh, setting. So in this case, let's say that we were using, we were making some other type of device and we wanted to use a different, we were using some rectangles up here and they might have a different color order. Well, if you look now, if we look at 40, if we look at 43 and we click on it, you know, it doesn't have the same different color order because it's the same type of pixels, but imagine if it did. We could go ahead to this virtual string and we could change the color order to something else, hit save, and then basically from that point on, it would have a different color. So now it's turning blue. So each virtual string, it kind of gives you the power to set the actual um, uh, color order if you were to switch pixel types. So uh, when I mean pixel types, I mean just different manufacturers of the same pixel type. For instance, 2811s, you might get some from Ray or you might get some from uh, somewhere else where the manufacturer of the actual pixels uh, used a different color order. And this, uh, or you, the rectangles and squares are sometimes have a different color order than strings or strings have a different color order than strips. This allows you to actually change the color order. And also the brightness too. For instance, if you wanted this to be a little bit brighter, you could go ahead and set it at 100%, hit update. And then now you notice it just got really bright. But the stem itself still has the same brightness. If we click on the stem itself, it still has the same brightness. Let's go ahead and switch this back to um, BRG. All this is done live. Uh, there's no restarting of the controller. It just automatically 
and you see now the brightness is uh, two different brightnesses. So each virtual string could have a different brightness too. Um, now we, what I did is I connected these up all in a row. So this one comes in and comes goes into the next one. So now I can go ahead and create another virtual string. Um, actually, I just deleted that one. Uh, the best way to get it back is just refresh the page. I haven't saved it yet, so if I refresh the page, I'll get it back because it's still saved in the controller. So I go ahead and add another one. It automatically increments the start address. I put in 14. I put in 1. Um, and now I've got the stem of the next one. And then I add another one. And it, you notice it picks up right where the last one left off. Uh, I put in um, 2 and then 2. And while I'm there, I'm just going to continue on and make the third one. So I add another one. And I put in 14, 1, because I don't want any grouping, and then create another one. And then I put in um, 2, and then 2, and then hit Save. And now I've just saved um, all six virtual strings that make up this, um, you know, these three poles that are interconnected to each other. So if I clear everything, and I go over to where string 2's base starts, which is at 46, and I come down to, in my X lights here, and I hit 46, I see the, you know, the red one turns on. And if I go over to um, the next one, which is the dome starts at 88, uh, I go down to 88, we see the dome turns on. And if I go over here to where the next thing starts at 91, you see the bottom turns on, and then go up to the dome, which is at 133. And we see that the red turns on red. And we did that basically with six virtual strings um, attached to port number one. And that kind of shows you how to model that. Now, an interesting... Um, idea here is I have the star here and and now I'm going to start winging it because I haven't remembered exactly how this star was built but I do know that the star is connected to the third port and that there is a null node in the string going to the star that I do know so um, we're here on the third port uh, we'll go ahead and, and, and set this uh, to start at uh, this one here ends at 135, so we'll have this one start at 136, and then and that way we don't have the uh, three poles uh, lighting up. Um, they're WS2811s. Uh, the star is basically made up, I believe it's made up of three sections of 2811s, or is it, yes, it's, uh, or two sections. So there's two nodes or six 50-50 LEDs, two RGB channels control each spoke. Uh, the wire comes into the middle part, which is basically four square rectangles. Okay, so it comes in there first, and then it leaves the rectangles, and it goes out a spoke, and then comes back in and goes out another spoke. So it, it connects from the center out on all the spokes. So we have one, two, we have seven spokes, and we have four things in the middle. So let's just try to model this with uh, port number two and just winging it because I haven't really done it yet. So we are going to come into the middle here and there's going to be four um, LEDs. And I want them to work as a group. I want it to be like a flower type thing. So I want it to be four and I want the grouping to be four. And I don't know what the color order is yet. So we'll leave that for a minute. And it's going to start at 136 and we hit save. And now we've saved that. So now if we go down to 136, <laughs> nothing will turn on. <laughs> um, let's try to find out where I went wrong here. Maybe I don't have it plugged in. Do I have it plugged in? Oh, I forgot. I have the null node. <laughs> so that's a, a very good lesson here is we have the null node in play. So we need to actually put a null node in here. So we need to put a one in for the null node and we hit save. Okay, so now let's see if that solves the problem. I hope it does. I don't want to really have to edit the video.